Hi, this is Josh at Dream Body Clinic, and today we're going to talk about certified stem cells. So as you'll see at our website, www.dreambody.clinic, if you go to the menu, it says certified stem cells. You can click there and it's going to explain everything we're going to go over real quick here. But the main thing is people want to know the process, what cells we use, you know, how we make sure that they're good, they're safe, all of that. So first, let's start with we do third-party lab analysis of all of our mesenchymal stem cells. We use flow cytometry. That's how you determine what kind of cell you have. We can prove they're pure, isolated. That's all you're getting, mesenchymal stem cells. We look at mycota uh, mycotoxins, we look at bacteria, we look at diseases, I and mean, it's a whole list of things which is listed there you can see. We make sure you're getting the purest, best mesenchymal stem cells. So the process starts in the birthing room, actually. We work with a group of gynecologists that have been doing this for a long time. They specifically work with first-time mothers. So right there, we've got our screening process begins for the donors. We want first-time mothers. We want them to be between the ages of 18 and 25. We want to make sure they're young and healthy. You know, if a woman has birth after the age of 30, it's technically a geriatric birth, as crazy as that sounds. Younger, healthier women means younger, healthier cells. We want to make sure that they don't have any major diseases. A mesenchymal stem cell cannot carry a virus. You don't have to worry about that. But if the donor had a retrovirus, there is a less than 5% chance that could get carried over. It's a very small percent chance, but it is a chance. So we go a step further. We ask the women, have you, how many sexual partners have you had? If they answer more than one, they're disqualified. So we've done all that, now we do blood work. We check for all those retroviruses. If you find anything, automatic disqualification. We also ask them about their COVID vaccination status. If they have had any of those vaccines, we will not accept them. Look, we just don't know the research out there. We're not saying anything good or bad about the COVID vaccines. We just know a lot of our patients would prefer not to have that in their stem cells. And luckily we're able to screen for it because here in Mexico, anyone who got any of the COVID vaccines was registered into a federal database that is easy to check via their CURP number, which is sort of like a tax ID number. So we ask, we verify, and we make sure you've got the best, healthiest cells possible. Once that part is done, the woman is agreed to donate. Look, we can't compensate them because that would be buying human tissue, super illegal. So all of this is a donation process. They're happy to be able to help other people. This tissue would be thrown away otherwise. So we take that and we take it straight to the lab. You only have a few hours before that tissue can go bad. So fortunately, we only need a new umbilical cord like maybe every month or two, not too often. And we have a lot to select from. Now, even with these stringent criteria, we have, I mean, it's not a ton, but we've got at least enough to select from to make sure we've always got good options because when the woman's giving birth, you know, the, the doctor is not worried about the placenta and umbilical cord. They're in there to make sure that baby gets delivered. So we do all of these births via C-section and we then collect that tissue. We get it straight to the lab and we start processing. So in this processing, we're going from the lab to the centrifuge to the shaker tables. It's a whole process to get this from tissue to cells and liquid. Once it's there, we get it into culturing flasks. They're put into the incubators. The incubators keep the perfect temperature, oxygen levels, CO2 levels, a perfect environment for stem cells to grow. You add what's called a culturing medium, and that culturing medium has all of the nutrients to make sure that your stem cells can grow the best possible. I mean, it is like the Garden of Eden for cells. They have the perfect environment, they have the perfect nutrients, and they're ready to replicate. So they eat through that culturing medium over time, and once that happens, we take them out. We add more culturing medium, we go back in. This is called passages. You get a lot of people asking, oh, how many passages do you do? Look, the, you can do these forever if you physically wanted to, but you do hit a point where they start to have issues. Surprisingly, things don't really evolve in the lab. They tend to devolve. So once you get to what's called the 12th passage, which would be way too far to go in our opinion, we would never go there except in research capacity, which we've done. And at the, around the 12th round, the biologist will tell you it starts to, the cell should be this nice circular shape, starts getting oblong, things starting to deformed. They, they start looking worse and worse. So we never go anywhere near that. 
the first few rounds of cultivation are actually just to get the isolated stem cells. You know, when you first take these across, you're not just left with mesenchymal stem cells. There's monocytes, other cells that takes around a passage or two to get rid of. So those first two to three rounds are just isolating and growing the cells. Then we go another three past that. So we're able to get very young, very healthy cells. Now with each replication there or passage, there are differences. You'll hear some people talk about, oh, well, don't they get weaker or worse? Well, no, they don't get weaker or worse, anything like that. What happens is their telomere length shortens. A telomere is on the chromosome. It's like the tail of the cell. It looks like a DNA helix. It's got rungs to the ladder. And every time a cell replicates, you lose a rung. Well, you're going to eventually run out of rungs. And at that point, a cell goes senescent. You don't want a senescent cell. It's considered a zombie cell. So even though we speed up the removal or, you know, the, the waste of telomere length, it's not far enough to matter. These cells are not going to stay in our patients indefinitely. They typically stay in their system for eight months to a year. And then the immune, they differentiate the immune system takes them out. You won't even know what's happening. And because of that, that telomere lengthening does not matter. So we have very healthy cells. They're from the youngest tissue possible. And we can get these large numbers. So we do all of that in the lab. And then when we're ready for cultivation, we have different cultures going in different incubators at all time. So it's like baking. We can make sure every day we've got a new batch that's fresh coming out. So if you came today and did treatment, that means yesterday your cells would have came out of cultivation and then we would always administer within 24 hours. Now we've done tests. We want to see how long, once they're out of culture, will they survive? And in a refrigerated environment, they will stay viable for around like four days. Really for three days, you're looking between like 100 to like 95% viability. Day four, it starts to drop. By day five, you're down to like 60%. And subsequent, it's usually within like a week, you have no cells left. They do start to die off pretty quick. They don't have anything to eat. There's no culturing medium. We suspend them in what's called sodium lactate. It's very similar to saline solution. Um, this makes it easy to keep them refrigerated, keep them alive, and then administer them to patients. So we do all that. We use cell counters to count the cells, to check viability. We add it. Now, when you do flow cytometry or cell counting, you do kill the cells. So you have to add a special dye put it in the inverted microscope to the cell counter and you do different sections of it, moving it around to get a general consensus of the average number of cells. And it's got this AI algorithm that can count the cells. And if the cell membrane has been penetrated, that means the cell's dead. This blue dye infiltrates and the whole cell turns blue, doesn't get counted. This is how we check viability, health of the cells when they die that cell membrane can be penetrated and they fill. So we're able to check all of this. We provide third-party analysis to all of our patients. So the women are screened, the um, umbilical cord and placenta is screened, then the isolated cells are screened, and then those cultured cells are screened. And you get that final report from the third-party lab to show you these are good, viable cells that can be administered with no issues. They lack what's called HLA, human leukocyte antigen. That's the marker of any organ in your body that tells your immune system, this is yours, this is your tissue. So since they lack that, they're considered immune privileged. You don't have to worry about them flaring up the immune system. In fact, their biggest benefit is helping immunoregulation. They, they are so beneficial for your immune system. In fact, even with things like graft versus host disease, they can help with. So the very thing people are afraid of getting graft versus host when your body rejects foreign tissue, they actually benefit. So they're incredibly great for inflammation, for anti-aging, for autoimmune diseases, for uh, joint health, for brain health. I mean, the list is very extensive. And fortunately, we have that all listed on our website at www.dreambody.clinic. You can scroll down. All the treatments are listed there. Click on the one you want, get all the information, and then give us a call. We do free consultations. We're happy to answer your questions. You can call us toll free at 833-445-9089. I'm Josh. Happy to help.